Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm actually going to be doing a book review and this is not going to be like a fun and exciting book review because it's actually a book I really didn't like. Which is I guess is a bad start for the year and for my first book review this year as well and since the summer. Uh, I just really wanted to do a book review in this book because there are a ton of really strong opinions. So the book I'm going to be doing a book review of today is Swoon by Nina Malkin and I actually read this book in three a day so I read about you know 140 pages each day which is quite a lot but I'm gonna come back to that later. So the book is about this girl called Candace her nickname is Dice and she moves from New York to Swoon in Connecticut and she becomes or she already is I don't know best friends with her cousin Penn who always lives there. Penn is you know blonde and stupid and, you know, really famous and hot and has big boobs, you know, uh, kind of like the t stereotypical blonde girl in the countryside. And this town swoon, everyone is really, really wealthy and, you know, all their parents are doing something prestigious or that kind of thing. And so Dice is actually kind of clairvoyant or psychic in a way. You know, her parents think that she has epilepsy because that's what her brain waves look like when she's having, like, a moment or of clairvoyancy. But this one day when Penn and Dice are by the lake and they're smoking weed, Penn decides to climb up a tree stupidly enough and then she falls off the tree and she dies for a second. Her body gets possessed by a spirit who was hung by that specific tree. This spirit's name is Sinclair Youngblood Powers and he has come back to get revenge on his death of the whole town of Spoon. From time to time Sinclair gets vacant kind of and he comes forth in Penn's body and her eyes kind of change color and she becomes sort of possessed and he has control over actions and then he just disappears, you know? And so Penn starts doing these really really weird reckless things that kind of are going to destroy lives for other people in the town and that's Sinclair doing. And so Dice is the only person who actually knows that Sinclair is in Penn's body. Dice, sometimes uh, she can bring forth Sinclair purposefully and she has to hold his hand the whole time otherwise he disappears. And these two basically grow a connection and they fall in love with each other. So you guys can kind of see the issue here. That's all I'm going to reveal. I actually really didn't like this book, you know. Maybe it's because I read it like so fast but I, I didn't think it was because I pushed myself to do it. Like I wanted to know what happened because the plot is like pretty good. The characters are also pretty good, but there was something about the book that didn't like pull me in. Like I couldn't connect with any of the characters. I didn't feel anything when I was reading the book. I didn't I didn't get sad last chapter. That was cry like at the end of a book. This time just the love story of kind of Sinclair and Candace, like it didn't work for me, you know, Sinclair is supposed to be like this bad boy with so much charisma and he's gonna wrench the town and like he wants to hurt people, but she's in love with him and she's like, what am I gonna do about it? It just doesn't work for me. I just, I don't get pulled in by it like whatsoever. Penn is like a horrible character, she's like way too stereotypical, like she's not even you know, like, I'd want something more from her. It's just kind of predictable. I've watched a lot of book reviews on this book, and everyone says it's, like, amazing, it's so worth it, it's layers and layers of plot. I could literally predict what was gonna happen. It was just, it was really predictable. I don't think it was particularly clever. There was a lot of, like, witchy magic going on, you know, and it was never explained. Like, things happen in the book that are, like, supernatural or kind of witchy, and they do, like, these rituals and stuff. And they just say like, oh yeah, it worked, whatever. And they just never explain why it worked. And like, that bothers me. I love to get into like a plot that is very like supernatural or science fiction-ish, you know? But always, it's always kind of like reasoned and it all makes sense in that specific world. This world, like this, it just did not make sense. It was not a specific like culture of witchery. It's just like... It was so just random. It was so fucking random. Sometimes when I was reading the book, like, if you start a new chapter, you'd like the main character dies, she would be in like one place and she would tell like what she was doing in that place and then she'd jump back to like what was happening in between those two chapters and then she'd continue, you know, and jump between like time and 
I don't know, like, I think the author was trying to do something, and obviously it worked for, like, some people, but it just really didn't do it for me. So, obviously, like, that's pity, because I think that if I really, like, got into it, then maybe I would understand it. Maybe I didn't, I didn't put my full attention into it, maybe I was distracted. Maybe if I hadn't been so distracted, I would have gotten it. Obviously, this is all, like, relative. Obviously, I'm glad I read it because I love almost, like, all books I read. Like, absolutely love reading in almost all books. But this is, like, one of the few books I actually really didn't like. And so it says on the back, it says, like, fast, sexy, clever. I, it is fast. I don't think it's sexy and I don't think it's clever. It says, fans of Twilight have a new horror one to root for. I couldn't put it down. I'd like to say that I'm a person who has read... The Twilight books and has read the first book four times, I can probably say that I really didn't like this book and it's kind of like insulting to Twilight to say that like this book is something Twilight people would like. Now I know a lot of people like are probably gonna comment like, oh it's still a better love story than Twilight. Like damn, I've heard it. Like I'm so tired of people making fun of Twilight, like I get it. I just like it. Like, what can you do about it? I read it every time I feel bad, and it makes me happy, so... Swoon will make your every sense tingle. So I read another uh, book review online, and someone said that it was, like, creepy and stuff, and I didn't, didn't really get the impression of creepy whatsoever, which I think is really interesting how they can think it's creepy, and I just think it's, like, a lame attempt at, like, a teenage book of a love story. I think the concept of, like, a bad boy is kind of old now. Like, I want to read something else. Also, they use, like, alcohol and sex in this, you know, book. And I think they're... Okay, sex is kind of, like, a necessary co component. Drugs and stuff, it's just... It could... The book would have been better without it. Honestly, like, young people could have read it more. It doesn't really bring anything to the story, I feel. I feel like it's just there to, like, add another component of something that's, like, wrong in the book, you know? Um, maybe I'm, like, misinterpreting it. I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on this book. And if you'd like to read it, then please do and let me comment. I'd like to discuss it. I think it's always interesting to discuss books, even if I think they're good or bad. Obviously, this book had its moments, too. It's not bad writing it's just bad organization in my opinion i hope you guys are all having a lovely day and i'll see you guys soon bye